classification means what means differentiation i'm writing the word for you this is classification you all have once or twice heard this term classifications means what classifications means to categorize like we are humans we are classified in separate group we have seen frogs they are classified in separate groups snakes are classified in separate group fishes are classified in separate groups so classifications means distinction and making into groups that is classification and classification has to be done on the basis of something as you have heard in our previous classes that there must be some basis there must be some basic reason on the virtue of which classification is done now we have got another thing that is basis of we have come across another two terms that is basis of classification okay coming into the bitter details of this that means there are some criteria there are some predefined criteria on the virtue of which this classification is done characteristic is that basis of classification what is that that is characteristics okay characteristics are the basis of classification for biological system say for example sometimes in your class your teacher says no you have a very bad characteristic of biting your nails or you have a very bad characteristic of beating other boys <laughs> jokes apart so characteristics are the reason or are that platform upon which evidences are kept and classification is done if i say characteristics the first thing that comes into our mind is humans are characterized from that of the plants on the basis of mobility that is we can walk plants cannot walk we can also say that we have five fingers in our hand plants have no five fingers but if i go into a better distinction of what characteristic is monkeys also have not monkeys exactly primates like that of apes they have also five fingers so five fingers cannot be the sole discrete characteristic for the virtue of classification we need to go to a better detail and what that better detail is we have to reach to the lowest category of classification before moving into the next part of the chapter one basic thing i am telling that you all remember that for a biological system this is the basic principle cell the very starting and fundamental unit of life you have already read in chapter 5th then you have tissues this also have read in chapter 6th tissues are the accumulation of cell cluster of cells form tissues when many tissues combine together what they form is organ what they form is organ after organ when organs of a particular system combine together say for example if i talk about digestive system one organ is your mouth one organ is your stomach one organ is your pancreas so all these organs now constitute that of organ system that is for example digestive system and many organ system comprises of the final organism organism is what you can see why i have put a tick mark is this organism diversity is what we are going to learn in this chapter so coming back to my point uh, what i was telling is about characteristics so when you are classifying certain living organisms you have to start from the basic level and what that basic level is the basic level is the cell cell is constituted as the fundamental basic unit of life as you all know structural and functional unit of your body is a cell okay so for example let us compare a building how you can categorize a building on the basis of the bricks that has been used as given in your book already like the type of bricks will give the color of the building will give the longevity of the building will give the stature of the building like how the building should look like similarly the cells in our living system constitutes of that 
if you are having one cell then you are unicellular if you are having multiple cells then you are multicellular we will learn all these things if your cell is very old one then it is prokaryotic if your cell is very recent one then it is eukaryotic all these points are we going to learn step by step certain basic criteria are chosen in order to classify okay so the first criteria in them as written in your book is you this is also you have learned already in fifth chapter but we are again revising as i told you cell is considered to be the basic fundamental and structural unit of life so we will start with this word that is cell the first varied reason for classification has been considered to be whether the organism has prokaryotic cell or whether the organism has eukaryotic cell now in biology whenever you are going to learn something remember you need to break the terms for understanding u means new and karyotic means nucleus now you may ask me why nucleus karyon because the study of nucleus is called karyology what is it called karyology this is the study of nucleus so from here we have got the term eukaryotic new nucleus and pro means primitive pro means primitive that is primitive nucleus so the first classification that has to be done for an organism or a living system of organism is whether they are having eukaryotic or whether they are having prokaryotic cell some cells are membrane bound that is they have membrane around their structure like nuclear membrane like cell membrane some organelles of the cell you know the word organelles some organelles of the cell do not have any membrane around them it may also happen many organelles of the cell are suspended in the cytoplasm so the first basis of classification has been given this whether the cells are eukaryotic that is whether they are recent or they are prokaryotic they are primitive we are coming to the next basis of classification that whether there is a group of cells or whether there is a single cell okay this is the second basis for classification whether it is unicellular or it is multicellular again break the term uni means one uni means one multi means many many cells and one cells now you in tissues chapter have heard that many cells combine together many similar working and looking cells form together a cluster which is called tissues many organisms that has been found in our living system are having only one cell so do you expect in a division of labor in those organisms definitely your answer will be no because if there is only one cell that one cell has to perform all the physiological functions like digestion ejection excretion respiration circulation reproduction everything but for multicellular organisms it is quite defined that there will be a division of labor a certain cell will do certain work that certain cell will do certain work and it's a complex system as a whole okay the next one that is so we have discussed two one is whether they are eukaryotes or prokaryotes second is whether they are unicellular or multicellular the third one that you are going to write now is the third one that you are going to learn is ability to prepare food very genuinely from class 5 onwards we are learning that plants are autotrophic that is they have photosynthetic ability and they can prepare their own food by themselves by the means of the pigment chlorophyll 
by the means of the pigment chlorophyll. So, this is the third basis of classification that whether the organisms are photosynthetic or they are not photosynthetic. We, all humans, all animals are heterotrophic. That is, we are dependent on the plants for our food or dependent upon other animals for our food. You are all acquainted with the terms autotrophic and heterotrophic. Autotrophic means they can prepare their own food by themselves. Heterotrophic means they are dependent on other organisms for their food. Okay. So this is the third basis of classification that is whether it is autotrophic or it is heterotrophic. Last the fourth one is body organization. The body organization means what? Means whether the body of the organism is well differentiated. See, I am giving you an example. This is a plant, a green colored plant. We have leaves, we have stem, we have roots, we have petioles. What we call this? We call this no petiole. This is leaf and this is petiole, the stalk like structure. So, the basic three vegetative structures of the plant, leaf, stem and roots are present. So, can we say that it is well organized or well differentiated? Definitely yes. But say for example, this animal, no proper mouth, no proper anus, no proper heart can be distinguished. So, can you say that this organism is very well organized? Definitely no. For comparing with that of the frog, you can say yes, quite more organized. If you compare frog with that of me, then obviously a bit more organization you can find. So, body organization is the final point. So, let us revise once again. First one was prokaryotic or eukaryotic. Second one was multicellular or unicellular. Third one was ability to make their own food or photosynthetic or non-photosynthetic. And the last one is whether they are structurally organized, body is well differentiated into all parts or not. So, coming to the end of the first beat, our last portion is these plants and animals they cannot be categorized on the basis of same characteristics. What is that? Say for example, if I consider the characteristics of flowering, will you find flowering in, in animals? Definitely your answer will be no. So third and the last portion of this unit, this very uh, bit of your chapter is whether these organisms like plants and animals can be categorized on the basis of same characteristics. Your answer will be no, because animals are very diverse, plants are very diverse. So for that purpose, you need certain stippled basis of classification. With this, we complete the first beat.